Okay, what's her name? Uh, I'm Emily Rogers, mm -hmm. and I'm a senior. I just graduated this May. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah so what I thought when I first got here to Sweetbriar, um, I don't know, I was very much, I was very focused when I got here. I knew that I was going to be graduating early, so I was taking a lot of credit hours, and I was working um, because I'm an off-campus student, so I had to work, obviously. But I really did appreciate the setting, how in nature it is. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can yeah. like, hear all sorts yeah. of birds and everything. Yeah. Um, and I really appreciated how, it, how rural the setting was. I know that a lot of students see that as a drawback, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being in nature, being in the country, and having all that that offered. And we're not too far away from Lynchburg and Charlottesville, and um, since I had a car, it was easy to go to both places. But yeah, I really, I had a very good first impression of Sweetbriar, definitely. Mm -hmm. I stayed on campus my first semester while I established residency in Virginia. That was hard. I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of dorm style living. Um, and so that was hard my first semester. But I'd say that that was really the only negative side that I ever experienced at Sweetbriar. Everything else has been completely positive. Students? Oh, absolutely. The students here are wonderful. They're, mm. and obviously it's a generalization to say that every single person is super nice and super fabulous all the time. but. You know, on the whole, I had a very pleasant experience here. Everyone was really welcoming and very accepting and very kind. And faculty? Let's see. The faculty, I've had mostly positive experiences mm -hmm. with faculty. Occasionally there's one professor that you may not see eye to eye on or you're upset because they gave you a bad grade on something you thought you did really well on. But on the whole, I think that we have a very talented group of faculty here. I mean, I personally have no complaints. So I just worked over the summer and I did internships and I took online classes mm -hmm. uh, because like I said I knew I wanted to graduate early so I made a point of making my summers really valuable in terms of mm -hmm. getting credit hours I knew I would need in order to graduate. And I also worked full-time. So you're finishing school in less than what people normally do? Yes, I finished school in two years. Yeah. Wow. And you knew you would do this two years ago? Well, originally I thought that I would maybe do two and a half or three years. Uh, but last August I was working through my schedule and I thought, hey, if I really cram this year and I take X, Y, and Z online classes and I make sure I have all my gen eds and all my business requirements, I, I discovered that it would be very possible for me to graduate in two years. So I decided to go for it. And it was an economic issue why you wanted to do that? It was a variety of factors. Part of it was economics, why I chose to graduate early. I knew that I, um, even though I did receive a generous scholarship from Sweetbriar, I didn't, I do, did incur some student debt and I didn't want to have a lot of debt when I graduated college. So there was that. Um, and then also, I, I suppose I'm just an impatient person in general. I thought that I would want to get through it as quickly as possible. Um, and everybody told me, uh, during my decision-making process to, you know, don't worry about it, slow down, just enjoy the time you have here. And in some ways I did miss out on some things by graduating so early because I was always so busy that I didn't get the chance to experience a lot of campus events and community. Yeah. But I did make a point of deciding this past semester and half of the semester before to get more involved and to work a little bit less um, and to really get to know some of the people on campus. So it did come, but a little bit late for me. Like I did theater. get a little bit of the true college experience, like but dance. a little bit late. Like dance with Magruder. Exactly, I was in the dance concert, I joined some clubs, I was in a tap club, I, uh, I participated at events, I went to different events and lectures and things like that. I, you know, I really made a point of being involved and and I really enjoyed it and so part of me wishes that I had been involved my entire time here um, but you know it, it is what it is at this point like Dungeon Dragons <laughs> yes yes I am also a member of the Dungeons and Dragons group Daughters of Ashbrook um, mm. very excited about that wish I had joined sooner but it was very fun yeah what I had on my here. mind this past year well I was just really busy. Like I said, this past year I had I did the math, all the calculations, and mm -hmm. I looked at my schedule and I my credits, and I thought, hey, 
I could graduate in May, but it means that I'll have to take like an insane amount of credit hours. I took 24 or 5 credit hours both these past two semesters, so I knew that I was going to be busy and um, I still was working full time, so I just sort of put my nose to the grindstone and I thought, uh, you know, I'll just do what I have to do to get through this. And it wasn't until about December that I decided that, you know, I really want to be involved and I want to work less and be more involved in the Sweetbriar community, which I'm really glad I made that decision because it's a wonderful community here. So can you tell me now so about me March 3rd? Your March 3rd. Yes, the infamous March 3rd. Yeah. It was a very interesting day. Uh, normally when there are campus-wide meetings and events, uh, well, meetings, I should say, I don't normally go to them. I think because I'm so busy, uh, or I was so busy, I would just, you know, wait for the notes or the meeting minutes to come out later. And for some reason, and I honestly don't know why, the president... President Jones sent out an email on the 1st or the 2nd saying that they, we were going to have a meeting March 3rd and that they really wanted everyone to come and there was something about the tone of the email that made it seem like it was very important and so for some reason out of all the meetings that I had skipped my entire time here I decided to go to that meeting and it was very strange when I got there some people were already crying and I had no idea what was happening I had thought that someone had died honestly I did uh, because the the atmosphere was so somber and then when he announced when President Jones announced that the school was closing that they had made the decision to close the school there was an audible gasp throughout the entire student body and then just lots of sobbing honestly it's not an exaggeration at all half of the room if not more was weeping and crying and and it was very strange leaving it was sort of an out-of-body experience it was like we weren't really there and it wasn't really happening and it wasn't until a little bit later that it actually sunk in and you well how I reacted to the March 3rd closing it's I sort of took to arms in my usual fashion the first thing I did as I uh, I texted my one of my business professors dr. Scott I asked him where he was. He said in Prothro, the cafeteria. So I walked straight to Prothro. I sat down and I asked him if I could change my senior seminar project. And senior seminar in business is creating a, a business plan for a hypothetical business. So I sat down and I looked at him and I said, can I change my senior seminar project? I want it to be about Sweetbriar College. And he's, we discussed it a little bit, but in the end, the gist of it was that it wouldn't be a problem, but it would be challenging. And from then on, we decided to work on an alternative business model for the school. Um, and he even presented it in several drafts that we had created, along with other collaborators, uh, to the board, you know, for their feedback and or approval. Uh, we were talking about March 3rd. Yeah. But so you erected immediately like that what you know when everybody was crying you're just they're shocked a little bit there was some shock I suppose but in a way there wasn't even time for shock my brain immediately went to okay this bad thing happened what can we do about it how can we fix it you know how can we stop it and that's how like I said I sought out my business professor to see what we could do because I thought that we could make a difference and I think we have with the plan that you came with. Yes, we did create an alternative business model, alternative business plan together with other collaborators. Um, of course, everyone should get full credit. There's a whole long list of us. Um, but it's a more focused approach to a liberal arts education combined with a STEM education, which focuses on science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. So what we really were trying to do is find a way to give Sweetbriar a direction and a, an identity rather than just being a very broad everything to all people college because it's not a real strategy. It's not a viable long-term business strategy and I think everybody knew that here, especially the faculty, especially the business faculty. Everybody knew that there was no real vision and no real targeted demographic for what Sweetbriar should look like and what the ideal Sweetbriar students should look like. And so it just led to a, a failure of vision, a lack of vision, a lack of real organization. Yeah. And that's what we were trying to combat. 
Why do you, I mean, what do you, you heard of Ashbrook's plan? Um, I heard that he had one, but I don't know any of the specifics of Ashbrook's plan. Why do you think, and this is not really something that we have to put in, you know, probably not put in the documentary, but I'm curious at this point. Why do you think Scott's plan is called the STEM plan? STEM? Oh, well, that's really I know, I know, I know, I know, but you, by the beginning you said it's a combination of liberal art and STEM. And right. when you read about it in the news, mm -hmm. they just mention the STEM aspect. Well, STEM, uh, Dr. I know what Scott, STEM is. Yeah. Dr. Scott's program and my business plan, they diverged a little bit because we as people just disagreed. He wanted something very focused that was all STEM. And I believe that we should have a liberal arts component with humanities and, you know, studio arts and visual arts and theater and things like that. Um, and other classes to give a more well-rounded education. So I actually called my plan STEAM. And of course he still helped a great deal on that. Uh, but mine was basically, you know, the plan we worked on together and then I altered a little bit and I made it STEAM to include the arts, including liberal arts, mm -hmm. arts and the liberal arts, so arts and the humanities. Um, but yeah, Dr. Scott just had a different vision and STEM itself is an organization. So that's where the acronym comes from. It's an organization um, and they certify schools that meet the criteria to provide a certain type of education in that field mm -hmm. and with those resources, but... Um, How do, why do you think then well, your plan could be known then and why, how, why do you think your plan would work? your STEAM plan? Well, I think that my STEAM plan, and I have the utmost respect for Dr. Scott, but I believe that the STEAM approach would work better than the STEM approach because I don't believe that it we, you should exclude other majors. Should uh, Sweetbriar's focus be more limited? Yes. Should it have more direction? Yes. You know, we had 55 majors and in our plan we cut down to 18 and I think that's a very suitable compromise. But I don't think that you should entirely cut out all majors except for the hard sciences. Because true education develops you as a person and it encourage you, encourages you to think analytically and critically and broadly consider the perspective of others. So I personally believe that in order to get a true education you need exposure to a variety of different disciplines, you know, in the humanities in the visual arts, in the performing arts, in art and language and archaeology and English and foreign languages and engineering and physics and chemistry and biology. I think, you know, whether what whether or not you pick and choose um, the different classes is irrelevant, but I think it's important to have aspects from each, I, I define them as three broad disciplines the sciences, the humanities, and the arts. I think it's important to have components of each sphere of knowledge in order to get a true education that develops you as a person, that doesn't just develop your skills in a particular field, but who you are as an individual. What, well, why do you call it STEAM? Why, what is STEAM? Oh, STEAM for? is... Um, oh my god, I forgot the S. Science. Okay, let me try that. Let me uh, adjust that for the sound bite. Uh, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Liberal Arts, and Mathematics. So it's the traditional STEM program with the Liberal Arts added back in. And A for Liberal Arts. Yes, because I, I could just say A for the Arts, but I thought that that would be too vague and most people would assume that I meant Visual or Performing Arts. So I changed it to liberal arts so that it would make a little bit more sense and so that people would know it encompassed more than just artistic classes that encompassed things like literature and foreign language and classics, etc. Yeah. Uh, which would be the, the humanities or the liberal arts would be inside? Which, which one did you think Wait, I should stay? I don't understand which your question. Which part of the liberal arts and humanities should stay well, as majors? Well, like I said, and we how cut do down from that? 55 yeah. to 18 majors and we looked at a variety of different things. Um, we had data for the past 15 years about which majors were the most popular. So obviously the majors that only had one or two students majoring in that each year, we cut those because 
if only one student, if you're funding an entire program just for one student to be a major, then you're going to lose money on it for a variety of different reasons. So any of the, the majors that had significantly low enrollment, those were cut. But then we really focused on the, on the foundations of liberal arts. So we tried to create and I tried to pick majors that were broad and focused at the same time. I know that sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but the majors that I chose to keep were um, English, journalism, I combined anthropology and archaeology into a double major that it just comes that way, um, foreign languages and uh, history and things like that. So we kept the, the, the basics. You know, in some colleges you can get into very obscure, very specialized undergraduate degrees and I wanted it to stay a little bit broader than that to maintain some of the integrity of what a liberal arts education means but then also to pick the most popular programs because those are the ones that are going to bring in students. What about theater? Theater did stay. Both mm. technical theater and performing arts theater. Yeah, um, and in my plan that I created, one aspect of, you know, my version of the plan was the 60-20-20 approach. And that is that a student spends 60% of their, of their time and their credit hours in the department of their major. 20% in each of the other two. So like I said before, there are three main spheres, sciences, humanities, and the arts. So if I'm an engineering program, if I'm in the engineering program, I will spend 60% of my credit hours in the sciences, 20% in the humanities, and 20% in the arts. If I'm a theater major, I'll spend 60% of my credit hours in the arts, 20% in the humanities, and 20% in, in the sciences. That way, you're still meeting all your major and minor requirements and your gen ed requirements, but you're still being exposed to a variety of different uh, disciplines and categories, aspects of knowledge, different styles of learning, and different professors that I think really helps develop you as a person. Theater was particular. One of the things you saw what we did when we were shooting this film, we were following mm -hmm. Arthur, Annabelle's piece. Yeah. Annabelle's piece from scratch right from the carpenters mm -hmm. working the painters yeah and I found it very fascinating how people were learning a job mm -hmm. theater is interesting in that way I've done theater almost my entire life um, because my parents were in theater and in the artistic realm and so I understand a lot of it I haven't been in it recently in the last two years since I've been here I haven't been that involved in it, but it's a very unique world and it's largely unknown to people who aren't in it. I, I believe that there's a stereotype, sort of a bias against the arts um, and theater in particular, that it's not a lot of work or that it's not hard or, or that it doesn't take a lot, but there is so much that goes into creating one show. Thousands of man hours from dozens if not hundreds of people depending on the scale of the of the production that you're putting on And there's so much work that goes into it in so many different aspects um, Dictation and historical research and uh, Dramaturgies and costume design and you know costume creation and lighting design and scenic design and stage direction and stage managing and props creation like there's so many different facets and you can learn a lot by doing theater and by being involved in the arts. I think that people just don't realize how important, how vital the arts are to a good education.